AP Stats. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, today we are moving on to chapter four, section three, day one, and the last day as well of um, the practice of statistics. And we're going to talk about scope of inference um, and how do you use experiments wisely. So what are you allowed to do? What are you allowed to conclude from experiments that you perform? Um, and actually observational studies as well. Uh, the lesson part of this is pretty quick. Um, then there's a couple examples, but um, we've already talked about this a lot. So if you've been keeping up with the videos, um, we've been kind of hinting at what, what you can conclude from this stuff um, from the beginning of this chapter. So, uh, so the scope of inference is the, is basically like, the scope or the big picture of, you know, what are you allowed to conclude after a particular type of study? Um, and all of this is dependent on the randomness that you have. So if you randomly select your individuals, then you can make conclusions about um, a larger population and you can generalize to a larger population. Um, and if you have random assignment, then you, and of like a treatment, um, then you can uh, infer cause and effect. So in our little diagram here, we have um, a random assignment to groups, um, and then the random selection. Um, and so if you have random selection and you have random assignment, you can generalize to a larger population and you can also um, infer cause and effect. So that would be right here. Okay, so here's the breakdown, but basically, long story short, if you have random selection, if you have randomly selected the individuals for the study, you can generalize to the appropriate population. Um, if you have random assignment to treatments, you can infer cause and effect. And if you don't have random selection, but you do have random assignment, then you can infer cause and effect, but not generalize to a larger population and so on and so forth, right? This is just like all the different possibilities that could exist. Uh, this, the red is the worst case scenario, green is the best case scenario. Typically for um, observational studies, we have this, and for experiments, we have this, is typically um, how it works, more often than not, uh, but this is the best case scenario. Um, okay, so uh, we have a couple different examples. Um, this. The first one is uh, just kind of like a long example about a dentist um, who wants to know if a daily dose of vitamin C will result in fewer canker sores um, than no vitamin C. And so they're considering the following four study designs. Um, and so basically um, what you should do is read through the different study designs um, and determine what is the scope of what are you allowed to conclude from each of the different designs, okay? Um, so here are uh, design one and design two. So go ahead and take a look at those, read them, determine what you're allowed to conclude. Okay, so for the first example, um, there is no random assignment and there's no random selection. So the only thing that she can conclude is that for the patients she happened to see those couple weeks, um, there was or was not, depending on whatever she discovered um, an association between vitamin C and canker sores in those individuals and it's just an association not cause and effect. Um, so that's kind of a useless study unless all she cares about is like the individuals but that's not what she's looking for. Design two, uh, there's random assignment but no random selection so she can look at um, vitamin C that's supposed to have vitamin C uh, causing reductions of canker sores but only for the patients she saw so she cannot generalize um, to a uh, to the larger population or the people in the town uh, here take a look at design three and four um, same prompt all right for three she has no random assignment but random selection um, so she can make conclusions about um, 
there being or not being an association between vitamin C and canker sores for dental pati patients in the town. And so this part here is the generalization to the larger population, which is the patients in town, because that's who she selected from, uh, but cannot get cause and effect. Um, and then obviously the last one is yes, everything and yes, everything. Okay. Um, all right, then the next example um, says many students, they insist they stu study better when listening to music. A teacher doubts this claim and suspects that listening to music actually hurts academic performance. Um, come up with four possible design studies to address the question at Dawson. In each case, the response variable will be the student's GPA at the end of the semester. Um, go ahead, take a look, give it a try. Okay, I just wrote something down, but I don't love this answer because, you know, if you think about it, like, so what I did is I randomly selected people and, like, forcing them to listen to music during a test or a quiz or something. Um, so using random selection and a random assignment to each group, um, which I don't particularly like because a bunch of whole, bunch of reasons. One is that... You know, it probably, the thing that would probably affect it the most, I, I did a blocked design, blocked by age. Um, it was like came up with that, but I think um, it would be better to block maybe by like type of music that they're listening to, except then they're still listening to music. But maybe have different, yeah, but that would be good. Oh, I'm being summoned. Sorry about that. But anyways, um... Yeah, so there's probably a lot of different ways you can design this. Um, the way that I did it, I tried to give an example of like um, random selection and random assignment, but you know, that's probably not very likely. You probably would have to get volunteers. Um, and the, I had them take, you know, listening to it during tests because that's the only time you can control it. Um, but, you know, I, that's not what the teachers question is about. It's about um, that listening to music hurts academic performance, um, but students are studying, right? So I don't know. There's a bunch of different ways that you could probably design this and some better than others. Um, anyways, so the call that I just got was from my boyfriend who um, was driving away and he gave me a call because um, there's a right now this year, um, this day, there's a, a ton of fires out west, um, and so the haze is like crazy, crazy um, strong uh, on the front range, but um, I took some pictures because basically you can see the sun and you can see the sun spots without looking through any type of glasses. It's kind of crazy. Um, so here's Oh yeah, there's one, so there were these people who were also looking at it, um, but you can see the sun right there. It's really cool, like obviously it was way cooler in person and like pictures can't do it justice, but like it really was literally red um, and you can just kind of see it's really cool. Um, and then that was like the later picture and then this one was earlier, um, maybe like 20, 15 minutes ago. Um, but the sun was just like bright red and you could see it, and you could see the sunspots on it. It was just crazy. Um, anywho, I thought that was fascinating. And the lesson's done, so bye. Have a good day. <laughs> see you later. Oh, we're done with chapter four. That's so exciting. That means my students have a test now.